Hi y'all, Billy here. Welcome to the Messy Studio. This project was, well it took a little longer than I thought it would and there's a lot of explanation and other things involved so I'm not, probably not going to fast forward through a whole lot of it. I am some but the main thing is well I, I want you to know the information so it's going to be a little bit too long to use one video so I'm going to have to break this little project down into several iterations. Uh, I don't know how many yet. I don't have a finished product yet to show you because I'm waiting on the lacquer to cure and that's going to take a few days. But we'll begin by stepping you through the process and, and I'll show you here what we're going to try to end up with in the long run and point you to where you can go to find the stuff that I used. So, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming. And let's go. Today we're going to take a, a little tour. Kind of back to my pen turning days. I still turn a few pens now and then. Not as many as I used to. <clears throat> I went to SWAT in August. And my friend Ken Nelson from Kalanchan Woods hooked me up with some of these. These are his puzzle blanks. I don't know how well you can see that, but there you go. That might be a little better. But he makes... These are all laser cut and hollow. You put them together and glue the tubes in. I'll be showing you the turning process as we go. There's <clears throat> one difference in this one though or this set uh, aside from just being the jigsaw puzzle multicolored if you replace the normal yellow number three with a black number three that Ken will send you then you have an autism awareness pen and the reason these are important to me is because I have twin autistic grandsons so I'm making this, this pen and another for my daughter and her husband for Christmas. So stay tuned and we'll see what this turns out like. I've not turned one of these before. I did not film the process of putting them together and let me tell you, they're a bit of a pain and I'm going to fill in places that are a little bit loose. I've already started coating it with some black colored epoxy. So I'm going to continue to fill those voids in in between the puzzle pieces so it makes kind of an outline and it, it'll look better than just filling those with CA. Let's get started. Almost forgot. In the description down below, like just down here, I'm going to put a link to Kalanchian Woods so you can get to it easier. They have all kinds of laser cut kits that you can put together, some easier than others. But Ken does a great job. He's been doing this for a long time. Uh, 2007, I know for sure. I started turning pins in 05. So I'll put a link down there and you can check him out. Thanks. Okay, now it's time to start turning these puzzle pins, these puzzle blanks that we got from Ken Nelson at Kalanchan Woods. Now, I've already flushed the ends of the barrel on this Sierra. This is a Sierra I'm making. This particular puzzle pin kit only fits the Sierra length pins. <clears throat> Note, with these, because of all of these little pieces that are glued together, the last thing in the world you want to do is stick these in a traditional barrel trimmer. If you do, you're going to have chip out that looks something like that. Yeah, I did that. I can fix it, but still, you don't want that. So what I did after I did this, I glued a piece of sandpaper, 80 grit, to the back side of the barrel trimmer. Flipped the cutter over, tightened it back down, stuck it in my drill press, and then I sanded the top of this 
flat and smooth using the right size cutter in the barrel trimmer and I got a nice flat cut. I don't have one of those fancy jigs that you put on your uh, up against a sanding disc or one of your standing belt sanders. I don't have that. I don't want to spend the money on it. That's a single use tool. I try not to have as many of those as I can. <clears throat> so, sand it. Don't use the cutter. You might get by using the cutter by hand. I did a little bit of that and it seemed to work okay. Just takes longer. But you've got to be careful when you hit that edge because you're going to hit an edge between where these two pieces go together. Okay, now, first I want to tell you that I quit turning on a mandrel. I quit turning pins on a mandrel back in 2007. I don't like using a mandrel. Uh, this was before the day of the mandrel saver. I think that may help because you're not putting pressure on that on that mandrel causing it to bow and giving you non-concentric pins. I hated that. So I got to the point where even when I was turning on a mandrel before I went to between centers, I would turn one blank at a time, one barrel at a time. I wouldn't turn both. I wanted as as little <clears throat> eccentricity in my and in the ends of my tubes as I could get so I started turning between centers there's a couple of ways you can do this uh, one and let me chase a rabbit here for a quick second there is apparently a place not known to a whole lot of the people that go to YouTube it's a forum a forum where pin turners from around the world get together and talk about pins and show off what they've done and uh, learn things from other pin turners. It's called the International Association of Pin Turners, IAP.org, if you want to look it up. I've been a member since 2005. A lot of great information out there. <clears throat> well, a couple of pin turners are also vendors. One of them actually makes to order well he used to I don't know if he does or any still or not but and I can't remember his name you'll have to search him out and find him but one of them makes machines he's got a wood, uh, metal lathe so he machines special bushings to go in most pens and they're pretty reasonable yes it's a single use item but you get a lot of use out of it I haven't wore a pair of his out yet but and that's especially useful if you're going to turn slim lines I say especially useful because <clears throat> the slim lines go on a quarter inch mandrel this is one of his slim line you can see it's 60 degree cone in the back this is one of his slimline bushings I love it it's the only way I turn <clears throat> but if you're doing something that's not a slimline here's a pointer for you and something that I use you know the Sierra bushings that you've already got these little jewels right here they're perfect <clears throat> you don't have to do anything to them to put them on a, a dead center now dead centers are cheap I got this one I believe from Little Machine Shop years ago it works great I like using Little Machine Shop because they're inexpensive and because it's a machine shop they know tolerances and they're not going to sell a cheap product so <clears throat> I got it from Little Machine Shop four or five bucks inexpensive if I wear it out or damage it or whatever I throw it away order a new one and your traditional bushings for every pin other than a slim line every pin that has a shoulder I mean every every pin bushing that has a shoulder like this you can turn between centers all you have to do is put the bushings in place just like you normally do 
And this time, instead of sliding them up over a mandrel, you put them between centers. Let me show you. Put it up on your dead center. Bring your tail stock up. Lock it in place. Advance your live center. And there you go. Now turn it like you would any other pin. Or any other pin blank. <clears throat> Between centers, you're not going to get any wobble. You're not going to get any eccentricity. Thanks for watching my silly antics. I hope something that I'm doing is beneficial for somebody. That's the only reason I'm doing it. So, if you like it, cool. If you don't, sorry. I just do what I do. And thanks for watching.